to start do you have any tips for starting yes i do i do uh why do you think men jump into other relationships after a breakup because they can right that's that's what it is because they can because the opportunity is there and they're like why not um but the other thing is the day a breakup happens isn't the day the relationship was over necessarily there is always a lead up to that day where you guys split up. It's not like you guys are fine, 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 fine. Like everything's amazing. You're planning your life together. You're not fighting. Um, you know, you're, you're affectionate. You're loving each other. And then a breakup. It doesn't happen that way. Breakups don't happen in a bubble. There is dysfunctional behavior day after day after day. Pain, hurt, anger, day after day. Frustration, hopelessness, helplessness, day after day after day. So by the time a breakup happens, realistically speaking, the relationship has been over because people have given up already. Um, so, you know, because their emotions were over before the breakup happened, right? That could be part of the reason. It's not like they were like loving you one day and then not loving you the next. There's been, there was a decline of goodwill, a decline of good emotions um cocoon yes cocoon that's right uh are your books on audible i do have an audio book which is fix that shit it's not on audible because audible wants 70 percent, but you will find it in the link tree in my bio i've been reading fix that shit and meditating and the energy in my relationship is already better my love my love my love i love it love your hairstyle yes love that for you thank you hoping that yes okay um so for those of you who want to write a book what you need to start with is a folder um so a folder go grab yourself a folder or something to tuck loose paper inside um and what you're going to do is every time you have an idea every idea you have associated to that book like put the working title on the folder Every idea you have associated to that book, write it down in a piece of paper and stick it in there. I will have like envelopes in there because I'll just grab whatever is handy when when the uh, when an inspiration strikes me. Because you might think a thought is going to come back. No, baby girl, it's not. Like seriously, when you have a thought, write it down. If you're in your car, pull over and write it down. If you don't have paper, grab your phone and record a message to yourself or or text yourself. But when you get an idea like say you text yourself when you get home take that text put it on a piece of paper put it in your folder and this is the beginning of your book is getting all your ideas that are associated to that book in a folder so that when it comes time to start writing you just take all the ideas out and you organize them and then you start writing your book i took him back but i haven't really seen change you took him back too soon love you took him back too soon. You should have taken him back after you saw the change. So here's what you do. You say, I'm really sorry, but I, I think I made a mistake and I took you back too soon. And you need to, you know, exit. We need to not have this relationship anymore. You're, you're, you're chasing jail bait, my love. Like, you know, my parents called the police and went to jail for four days. Why are you doing this to yourself? Why are you continuing to be with a selfish short-term thinker? Why are you putting yourself in this position? Why are you insisting on suffering? I really suggest you get a coaching session so that we can figure out how you're going to break this pattern. Because obviously you don't think you deserve better than this. And that's a problem that needs to be addressed. Because your love life will continue to be disastrous until you address the problem, which is your selection. And, and the problem with your selection comes from something, but I don't know yet. We need to do a session so that I can help you work through this. <clears throat> I think I might not be on at the right time of day because I think my video feed isn't coming through for some people. I think it froze. I 
think my video froze. Uh, so for a session, go into my bio and click on the link tree. You're going to see there is a button that says uh, coaching session. Click on that. It takes you to a page. If you want to get yourself a coaching session, you have to follow the instructions on there. Thank you for the advice. I've been writing notes on my phone. I will centralize my ideas. Yes, lovely. Teenage on and off relationship? Listen, teenage relationships are fine, but you need to go at your pace. Like, do not ever let anybody push you faster than what your pace is for yourself. Your videos and advice have made my relationship better. I am more sane and confident. I love that. Thank you. You're so welcome. The girl was not taking no as an answer when dating, newly dating a guy. He told me to message her. He needs to take care of his own shit. He needs to take care of his own stuff. Uh, is cheating always the end? Cheating is automatically the end. Then there's potential for renegotiation depending on why the cheating happened. Uh, if this person is a serial cheater or if this was a one-off because there was what I call susceptibility in the relationship. But cheating is an automatic end because uh, basically what happened is there was a contract that was created when you entered this relationship. Part of the contract was monogamy. They broke the contract. Therefore, the relationship is over. Um, but there is potential for renegotiation. Let's say my husband cheated on me and he was like i'm so sorry i was so fucked up like i like it's, it was just so absolutely wrong um i absolutely would never do that again um it you know it wasn't one off maybe there was susceptibility um and so we renegotiated well for me i know that because you did that my imagination is going to go crazy if you want to get back into a relationship with me you're you're halfway because we need to meet each other halfway in terms of healing what's gone wrong because you betrayed me i need to know what's going on without asking your permission i'm going to be suspicious of who you're texting what you're saying so i need to ease my imagination without asking your permission in other words i want to see what's on your phone without saying can i see your phone so that means spyware on your phone linked up to mine so that i can ease my imagination without asking your permission while i do the work necessary to get over my own feelings you hello miss honey Thank you, it was a couple more. Yes, exactly. Is it cheating if something happened before being official? No, nope. Uh, here's the thing, your mistake was being committed to somebody who wasn't committed to you. So it's not cheating if something happens before you're official. Um, you don't like it because you were more committed to them than they were to you, but that's on you. That's not on them. Never hesitated to dump the motherfucker. Uh, how do you handle bringing up hard conversations? Um, so first of all, you always want to get them in a listening place. So you want to go to them and say, um baby there's something i want to talk to you about when do you think would be a good time and let them empower them to choose the time when they will be in a listening mood um and then when that time comes you're going to say i'm not saying what to do you're free to do what you want i need and then you stay what you need can men love one woman but have sex with another one at the same time I think so. I think so. Yeah. Here's, do you know why, by the way? Because sex isn't personal to them. Like sex, sex is personal to men if, if they are personally, if they are emotionally involved with a woman, but that's a choice on their part. Um, 
things. It can be very, very impersonal. It can be very impersonal to anybody, right? Uh... <laughs> How do I tell my love language is gifts and acts of service, not physical touch without sounding? You don't need to tell them. Just do a love language quiz with them. At the same time, do a love language quiz at the same time, exchange your results. That way you'll understand his love language too. Yes, women can love a man and have sex with another man. Yeah. Yeah. My ex hates me, but still would sleep with me. Why would that? Hates you is quite a strong word. When is it ideal to talk about finances in a relationship before you get in a relationship? Before you get in a relationship. There's so many discussions you need to have before you get into a relationship, which is why it's important to use that no kissing for three months dating rule so that you have all of these talks. Um, right don't get into a relationship with somebody who isn't aligned with you on important matters finances are important matters what are your financial goals um are you are you financially responsible should your partner be financially responsible yes what are the things that you want to buy with your hubby with your future partner is it going to be a uh, house houses travel you need to talk these things out and figure them out before you actually get into a committed long-term relationship. Otherwise, you kiss and hope it becomes a committed long-term relationship. But how much time are you going to waste on this one person before realizing, oh, they're not the one you want to have a committed long-term relationship with. So don't commit. Have all these conversations choose with multiple people by the way no kissing for three months means dating multiple people until you find the one you want like simultaneously right you can date multiple people simultaneously and then narrow it down and so this way you're not going to waste any time being committed to somebody and then finding out they're not the right one. Oh, let's commit to this one. Oh, not the right one. Okay, let's commit to this one. Oh, not the right one. Stop wasting time you don't need to waste time anymore How do I move on after a 10 year relationship? I got a book for you, my love is called Come Back Queen. So met my boyfriend and did something. If you wanna talk about that in a session, come and do that. You're welcome. My husband's mowing the lawn, which is why I'm not making TikToks right now. Uh, do you know anything about anxious attachment style? What I know about attachment styles is that it is unnecessary to label yourself with an attachment style because you can literally change your brain structure and your DNA, which means whatever label you're giving yourself is actually changeable so you don't need to label yourself all you need to do is examine the behaviors that are getting in your way change them into behaviors that are now making you happy so remove the label it is unnecessary because you are changeable you are changeable you're welcome so what are the behaviors that are getting in your way? So love, Leah, if you want to talk about that in a coaching session, we can do that. <laughs> Absolutely, my love. You are very changeable. We all are. 
And it's easier than you think, by the way. It's a lot easier than you think. Keep in mind, there are certain industries that want clients, right? Pharmaceutical industry, they want customers. They don't want people to get well. They want customers. They want people to be sick and buy their product. Mental health, in, in some parts of mental health, they don't want you to be well. Like one thing that I say is I would be, I'd make so much more money if I was less efficient. And yet people keep coming to me after going to therapist, psychotherapist, um, psychologists. They come to me and they say, wow, this, this has been more helpful than the last year of therapy. And that's because I, I don't, I don't, I don't waste your time, right? I don't waste your time because it's not about keeping you coming back. It's about healing you. It's about giving tools. It's about giving you wings. It's about teaching you how to walk so you can run. Um, it really is about empowerment and a lot of mental health therapy in whatever shape or form is about having you come time after time after time. There's two things that these professionals are being told. Don't tell your story. In other words, don't use yourself as an example. Don't let people feel like you can understand and empathize with them, be clinical with them, um, so that they feel worlds apart from you. And second, don't give them tools. You're just supposed to sit there and just listen and and here's a quote, I'm quoting here, I'm quoting somebody who, who got her PhD in psychology to become a child psychologist. I'm quoting what she learned. Don't tell them what to do. It's more powerful for them to figure it out on their own. It blew my mind when I heard that. And that was the day I decided I wasn't going to be clinical. I was going to do this my way because that's so much time wasted. How long are you gonna sit there and fumble and fumble? Are you gonna go do your own research to go find out everything that I found out? Sure, how much time is it gonna take you? A lot less time than it takes me to teach you what I know. So I really feel sometimes that they just want people coming week after week, month after month, so that the money keeps coming in. Um, so these these labels this attachment theory label unnecessary and yet look it, oh it's part of mental health right oh it's it's part of psychology um but it it makes you think worse about yourself that's another thing you need to overcome about yourself not just your trauma not just your history not just your dysfunction because you didn't you weren't taught how to be functional but you also have to overcome this STD that you planted on your forehead, anxious attachment, right? Are you, are you, some people are identifying with that. Some people are telling themselves that's who I am. That's what I am. I'm an anxious attachment. And they carry that like a weight, like a burden. So not only do we have to help you in so many ways, but we, we got to undo this and another knot, an extra knot you just made in your brain telling yourself, I'm, I'm an anxious attachment person. So I don't want you to label yourself with that because anxiety can change. How you were attached can change. It's all in your behaviors. The way that they come to this attachment label is we're gonna talk about your behaviors, we're gonna give you a label, then we're gonna talk about the behaviors where you're gonna stop getting in your own way. Here's how I do it. We're gonna talk about your behaviors and then we're gonna talk about the behaviors where you're gonna stop getting in your own way. Same exact thing, but I took off the label so you don't feel like shit. So I, I really wonder sometimes. I really, really wonder. If I had only read about it yesterday and it meant sense to me, but I don't like the label, so thank you. Yes, my love. You absolutely do not need the label. You just you just need to change your behaviors. That's it. And, and then you will, here's the thing, the stuff that I teach you how to do. So remember how I said earlier, we change your brain structure, we change your DNA. So Harvard did a study. They had people come in, do an MRI scan, go home, meditate for eight weeks, come back, do another MRI scan. Looked at the two scans side by side, saw the brain change shape in two places. The amygdala, which is fight or flight, which is stress, fear, and anxiety, shrink in size. This reduces your capacity to feel stress, fear, and anxiety. So anxiousness changes with meditation because you literally shrink the part of your brain that produces 
stress, fear, and anxiety, reducing your capacity to feel those emotions. When you change how you feel, you change your reactions. When you change your reactions, you change your behaviors. Boom, less anxious. Less anxious inside, less anxious in your behaviors. What about depression? They have women come in, do some testing, tested their DNA and their levels of depression. Send them home, I think it was about eight months or something. Women came back, again, testing the DNA, testing their level of depression. If you go from depressed to not depressed, your DNA changes. If you go from not depressed to depressed, your DNA changes. So we are completely capable of changing how we feel and who we are. So labels are not necessary. The only label you need is human being. That's the, that's the biological animal that you are. You are a human being. That's all you need to label yourself with. Is your hair curly? This is my natural curls. You can definitely change attachment styles. I used to think, yeah, absolutely. Which is why we don't need to label attachment style. We just need to look at the behavior. Take your eye off the label, put your eye on the behaviors. Yeah, very cottage vibes, thank you. I enjoy seeing you do the tools you tell us about, yes. After my first session with you, I quit seeing my therapist because you actually helped me a hundred times more. I love you, Miss Lovely. Is it a red flag if my boyfriend only asks girls for help at college? Uh, depends what else, depends what else. Oh, your video about a boyfriend getting close to other girls really helped me. Yes. Yeah. You're welcome. I want the vaccine, but my boyfriend is refusing to get it. This is really confusing and frustrating. So this is, you know, sometimes we find out we have different fundamental values. Is this a value or a fundamental value? So a fundamental value is one of those things that your partner absolutely needs to align with you on, right? Marriage, kids, um, you know, recently we've been talking about gift giving as a fundamental value, right? Some people, you know, really it's a fundamental value to them to not give gifts on commercial holidays they hate it they resent it absolutely it's a fundamental value if you try to force them to give a gift on this holiday they will resent the entire process but they give and give and give and give and give pretty much every single day um, they're of service to you they see their service to you as a gift and so they give you the gift of their service in some way shape or form on a daily or near daily basis um, and that is their fundamental value, to be of service to you, to be efficient in their giving rather than inefficient, buying you you know, a piece of jewelry that you're gonna wear a few times, um, right? Just buying you something for the sake of buying it rather than buying something that you need. So getting you cards and a flower that ultimately, you know, it's it's just the moment that it made you feel good, but it didn't serve you in other, other in, in another way, shape or form. And again, some people hate that. They love to be efficient rather than inefficient. Um, some people's fundamental value is, I, I if, listen, if I don't get something on this day, I just, I, I'm, I'm ugh, knife in the heart, right? Knife in the heart. That's how you know something is a fundamental value. It's a knife in the heart. For some people, it's a knife in the heart to try and buy you something on your birthday. For some people, it's a knife in the heart to not get something on their birthday. So we are seeing that there is a fundamental value that is emerging from this and people who share this fundamental value need to come together or turn it into a value. In other words, I understand that you are different and I'm okay with your difference. So um, this thing about the vaccine, is this a fundamental value or a value? Do you absolutely need to be with somebody who will get the vaccine or can you be in a relationship with somebody who has that as a difference from you, but you are okay with that and you can accept it. This is your crossroads, my love, is you need to ask yourself, do I need to be with somebody who gets the vaccine? In other words, break up with this one and get with somebody who will get the vaccine because it's a fundamental value to you, 
or can you shift your mindset to, well, we can have this difference and that's okay. But it, what this comes down to is we don't get into relationships to change people. He can make his decisions, right? He doesn't have a right to come into your life and say, now I'm gonna tell you what to do. He can say, I don't like our differences and based on our differences, I don't feel this is the right relationship for me. Just like I'm saying you can do too. I'm a shy, sensitive person. Would that be able to change? Absolutely. Absolutely. I used to be a wallflower, like, like major social anxiety. I'm completely opposite from that now. How do we change the behaviors for anxious people? So there's a lot of things that you can do, right? If you, if you want to change that, come and get coaching. I can coach you through the process. Um, but it starts with meditation. So if you want to dive into meditation, there's a meditation resource button in the link to my bio. I also have a YouTube channel. Thank you for the rose. I also have a YouTube channel um, with a Let's Meditate playlist. You can start listening to my music on there. How come it's so hard to get over someone even after two years? Uh, whatever your reason is, right? Because it can be different for different people. Grab come back queen to help yourself get over this last relationship. My boyfriend suddenly got a girl best friend after two years of us dating. Now they text every day, red flag, yes. Yeah, it is. Sorry to say. Sorry to say, but it is. I think I want to let my hair down. Is it may or may not work out. I want to hear. What do we think of that? Is it bad to talk about past partners with your current partner? You don't need to go into detail about past partners. It doesn't. It doesn't need to. Um, doesn't need to be a big conversation. Yeah. My boyfriend tells me he'd rather buy me the whole plant rather than cut flowers because they die. That's cute. Oh, I just bought face that shit and custom made. Lucky dogs. Thank you so much. You're welcome. He said, so I can't text someone every day. I can't make connections. Just listen, say to him, baby, I'm not telling you what to do. You're free to do what you want. Um, I just don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who seeks the attention of other girls. Right? You have every right to say that. You have every right to want that and say, no, baby, you can do what you want. Um, I just don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who seeks the attention of other girls. One of my favorite part of your book is the fake it till you make it to get out. Yes, and be confident. Exactly. Do you do coaching trainings or plan to in the future? I do coaching training. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I coach coaches all the time. I coach uh, people who want to become coaches, people who want to become authors. So basically business coaching. So if that's something you were interested in, it's the same rate as regular coaching sessions. So if you wanted to, um, to take that and start directing your own business, come get yourself some coaching sessions. Thank you. Hello. Could you explain why it's a red flag boyfriend and new girl best friend? Uh, sudden changes in behavior certainly are red flags and, and why, like, like this is your boyfriend. You should be his girl best friend, but all of a sudden he has a different girl best friend than you. I would certainly be suspicious if my husband suddenly had a, a girl best friend, um, right? Like it's one thing to get into a relationship with somebody who has a girl best friend. It's another thing to be your partner's best friend, but now suddenly you're not. Now someone else is their best friend. 
so excited. Oh, you're welcome. Can a guy become a generous long-term thinker if he wants to, but don't don't start a relationship with him unless he is? Um, we just had a session like a couple days ago. I don't know if you remember. Yes. So how are you doing? I'm doing good. I did go through with it and it was kind of hard, but I just went and hung out with my friends and I've, I've been doing good. Um, I just wanted to say he's, he kept, he's like calling me and stuff and he wants, he's like, well, I've just, I'm thinking about doing all these things to like work on myself and change. That's why I asked if like a guy can become a generous long-term thinker. So okay. And he's thinking about, like, I don't know, he's talking about eventually maybe we can get back together and stuff. But I just wanted to, like, hear your opinion on that. So minimum three months of you observing him before mm-hmm. taking him back. So that's three months no kissing, mm-hmm. no sleepovers, and no sex. Okay. Because this is all just talk. And talk is a short-term solution. Talk can also be a false solution. If and if he can man up, right? If he mm-hmm. can man up and and be at least nine out of the twelve character traits and no more assholes, if he can become a man and be consistent with that behavior for three months, then you can consider taking him back. But mm-hmm. he might try for a week or two or four or six or eight he needs to be manned up for three months it because here's the thing um people can you know as well as i do right people can Mm -hmm. put in some effort for change but then they get tired of putting in the effort so then they stop and then they just go how they were so he needs to show you that behavior for at least three months in the meantime don't wait for him don't stay in limbo start working towards your next relationship so define your next relationship level it up from this last one do the meditation um, and start putting yourself out there. Don't just wait for him because he says, Oh, I'm I'm thinking about changing. Yeah. So like if I were to get into like another relationship, like um, during like this period, then just go with that one. If it's better, pretty much. Use a no kissing for three months dating rule with everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, So let's say today he starts manning up. Today you start using the no kissing for three dating rule. Today you start meditating. Today you define your next relationship. Today you go on an online dating site. Online dating site. You put yeah. a profile up and you start talking to people and you meet somebody tomorrow and you start no kissing for three months with them tomorrow. You can date multiple people at once, right? You can spend time with yeah. your ex, but no kissing, no sleepovers, no sex. You can spend time with this other person, no kissing, no sleepovers, no sex. And you get to choose the best one. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And then he's also, it wouldn't be, would it be okay for him to do like the same thing as well? Mm-hmm. Of course. Okay. Together. Yeah. All right. Cause yeah, he wanted to talk today and I didn't know if I wanted to meet him in person or like do it over the phone or I don't know. I just feel like I needed to like talk to someone first. I say do it over the phone just to give yourself a little bit more. Um, control over the conversation if this conversation starts going in a direction that you don't like you can just hang out okay we did talk a little last night and it it didn't really go anywhere that I didn't want it to go so I think I I think it'd be fine to meet in person today but okay so okay well thank you you're welcome Bye -bye. bye Which book is best to help with daddy issues? No more assholes. That's so helpful. Thank you. Uh, Should you tell him he's on a three month probation? First of all, it's not probation. Um, And yes, absolutely. Because you need to start every, um, every encounter with who you are, what your goals are, 
and what are your plans to achieve them? So I want to get, get into a committed long-term relationship because I want to get married. I want to have kids. I want to buy a house. I am using a no kissing for three months dating rule to make sure I choose the right person. You need to say this before they move in for a kiss. Tried dating apps for a couple months and felt like a waste of time. Any suggestions? Yes. Come get a coaching session so that we can fine tune your approach on dating apps. Anyone else wanting to go live with me? Which book is? Yes. Thank you, my love. Actions always speak louder than words. Always. I order fix that shit. I'm so excited. Love it. Love your look today. Thank you. This is so natural. This is my natural curl. And I'm not wearing makeup today. Should I forgive him cheating back in November? Just found out about it. I'd say come and get a coaching session so that we can assess your relationship and see if it's a good idea. Gonna order comeback queen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Double thank you. Natural curls. No makeup. Natural curls, you guys. As this is my daddy. My daddy gave me this. My mom has super straight hair, and I wish I had super straight hair because don't we always want what we don't have? So I have, I have my dad's curly hair. Although my dad says that his hair is wavy uh, and the back is waving goodbye to the front. My dad is going bald. Uh, boyfriend leaves me whenever we get into a big argument. I fight for it, but he doesn't want to fight back. How about you stop fighting? How about you take the conflict out of your relationship? Grab fix that shit. For the manual on how to stop conflict, this is conflict resolution. Um, or if you need help, come get coaching. I come here for peace. Love it. What have you been up to today? Uh, I, I got big plans, you guys. Big plans. Big plans for some interior design. Uh, Going to be doing lots of painting. I'm completely redoing, like, I'm just refinishing. Um, I'm not replacing. I'm refinishing everything in my kitchen. Um, uh, painting lots of walls. Really airing, like just opening up the look of the place. In those tones, that's all getting changed to like light grays. Do, 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 do. Um, I hope you're live in an hour because I have to drive my daughter to her dad's. I might not be live in an hour. Um, four o'clock. I do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go get our usual um, Sunday night takeout. Next six years relationship. My ex went back to his ex. Love your lives. Thank you. Well, Fix That Shit be an audiobook. It is an audiobook. Fix That Shit is now an audiobook. You can only get it through the link to my bio. It is not on Audible because Audible wants 70%. And Mama says, uh-uh. If I do all the work, you don't get 70% of the money. That's, that's no, no. No, no. Usually my hair is pretty straight, Yes. Usually my hair is fairly straight. Straighter, like, you know, loose curls, big loose curls. Is this sushi day? It's going to be Vietnamese food day. It's going to be Bantan day. Guys, check it out. My kitchen cupboards are going to be white like this. White so like this. I can't wait. 70% to read to me. Terrible. She get 100%. I know. By the way, I narrate fix that shit. 
So I uh, just bought me more assholes. I love it. I narrate fix that shit. So if you are interested in fix that shit, go into the link to my bio and go grab your audio copy. Your audio book. Are your lives recorded so we can rewatch them? Yes, I do have a YouTube channel. Um, and on my YouTube channel, there is a live stream playlist and I, I put my lives over on there. Um, so I guess I'll be putting this one up. Do you guys want me to put this one up on YouTube? Do you have a podcast? Yes, I do. I have the podcast, I have a YouTube channel. The links to that are in the link tree in my bio. You are welcome. You are welcome. Let's see here. LCBO hours. I'm good. Hey. Hello, lovely. Six PM. I wanna feel you. I love the new hair color and cut. You should model so pretty. Thank you. Thank you. I was saying this is my natural curls. We are having we are having fun with the curls today. Fun with the curls. Uh, how does one deal with someone who gaslights them a lot? You dump them, motherfucker. You dump them. Why Why would you stay in that relationship? Are you playing the hoping game? Are you hoping they're going to change? Are you hoping they're going to decide, oh, you know what? I enjoy being truthful so much more. Um, this is how they operate. If they gaslight you a lot, this is how they operate. It's time for you to decide you deserve better and leave this relationship. Thank you, Ament. Guys, who wants a notification when I go live? Do we have some newbies here right now? Do we have some newbies? Let's say, here I am. Oh, guys, I'm so excited. I ordered a copy of my new book. Um, is blocking them on everything on my end healthy? Yes. No, no, this is uh, extremely healthy. Uh, I'm new. Hello, my loves. Hi. Welcome, lovelies. No, blocking people is very healthy. Blocking them is saying, I'm going to stop poking myself in the eye by seeing you pop up on my social media. Um, I'm going to keep you from interrupting me as I grow, as I heal, as I seek something better. This is you taking control of your environment, saying, I don't, I don't, like, you don't have the right to interrupt me. You don't have the right to mess up my day. And I'm going to make sure you don't. Oh, so we just got face that shit audiobook. After six years of a relationship, X went back to his ex. Does it mean he always had feelings for her? I don't know. It could be. So my newbies, my newbies, uh, if you want a notification when I go live, here's what you're gonna do. Go click my picture once or twice. You're gonna get a pop-up, and the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell when you do that. See, I just did. I was divorced two years ago, currently single. Which book do you recommend? Uh, no more assholes. Go get your next lover. Go get your next lover. This is the book that's going to teach you how to get into your next relationship. Just got the audio book, Caitlin. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. I'm working on no more assholes right now, you guys. But if he talks about his exes a lot, even after I told him not to, made an ex joke, and he got mad. Um, so here's what you're going to do, love. Uh, you're going to set a like boundary slash standard. Um, you're going to say, there's something that I realize, And, um, it, it's that, you know, the topic of exes in our relationship really needs to be a non-topic. Uh, obviously you're uncomfortable with me saying anything about your exes and I'm obviously uncomfortable with you saying anything about your exes. So I really think that we should both focus on making exes a non-topic and not talking about exes in our relationship. 
if that's going to be too hard for you, um, I'm, I'm kind of uncomfortable being in a relationship with somebody who just seems to be so caught up with their exes. So I, you know, I'm, I'm really going to wonder if this is the right relationship for me. Is it normal in a relationship to have some conflict with plans between both partners, family? Um, it can, like, I don't know what the circumstances are. Guys, don't forget to follow me on Instagram because I do a coaching giveaway every single month there. I'm too clingy because I have trust with his issues with him. Are they valid trust issues? Um, or are they trust issues because you're vomiting the past into your present? If they are not valid trust issues, come take my No More Insecurity program. It's meant to undo what the past has done in terms of being able to trust people. My thoughts on being friends with your ex is it's possible if you are platonic, it's not a good idea if you still have feelings for each other. Oh, well, you have trust issues because he seeks the attention of other women. We broke up. Very valid. Yeah. And that's, that's valid. That's not invalid. You don't have trust issues. You picked the wrong partner. Like you picked, now he wants to get back on track. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, if you don't know what to do, come get a coaching session. I would need to do an assessment. I can ask a bunch of questions, get the information that I need to help you, um, dis, you know, to help you understand how to proceed and have a plan for proceeding. Did you get a vaccine? Not yet. That's not my time yet. I'm in Ontario, Canada. So divorced two years ago, new to dating, uh, no more assholes is the way to go. How to get past trust issues and work on trust. I have a no more insecurity program. It deals with uh, like in inability to trust, anxiety, insecurity, overthinking, fear, and jealousy. Thank you. We'll book a session. Do follow the three steps for booking yourself in for a session. Uh, what if you think your husband is cheating, but never find any evidence of it? Then it's just what you think, but it's not what you can prove, right? So uh, perception can be vastly different from reality, right? So until you have the proof, there just is no proof that he's cheating. So get the proof. Um, get the proof, do what you need to do, get, get a detective, like a private detective, if you need to, um, but get the proof, get the proof because it's just speculation at this point. It's just a story you are creating inside your head. If you don't have proof, your videos are awesome. Thank you. You're so welcome. Always get the proof, my loves. You're welcome. Always get the proof. Always. Because if you just, if you um, bring this up, just based on speculation, I think you are because your behavior changed and this and this and you stay late from work and I can contact you. Um, delete a message, delete a history, right? But that doesn't, it, it doesn't mean anything. It's suspicious, but it doesn't mean anything. It's not a reality. It looks suspicious, but it's not reality. You need to get the proof. Because if you bring it up without proof, oh, no, 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 of course not. No, 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 I would never do that. So you got to have the proof before you bring it up. How to be in a relationship with an anxious attachment style. First of all, drop the label. It's unnecessary. Um, come and get coaching so that we can actually focus on what you need to do, which is understand the behaviors that are getting in your way, 
change them into behaviors that make you happy. Um, but the label is completely unnecessary. It blows my mind. Just understand that the industry that created this label wants you to stay sick because then they have a client and um, I, I'm not okay with that. Uh, the process that they go to give you the label is look at your behaviors, give you a label and then tell you how to change your behaviors. I look at your behaviors, tell you how to change your behaviors. The label is unnecessary, but you know what it does do? It makes you feel worse makes you feel like you're sick inside and in your head it makes you feel like you have one more thing you need to overcome and work on oh my god so uh it keeps you coming back right like the pharmaceutical 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 company i'm gonna i'm gonna give you a pill that gives you side effects that i'm gonna give you more pills for um so screw the atta the attachment styles you don't need to label yourself or be labeled with an attachment style, your brain structure can physically change. Your DNA can physically change. The label is wholly unnecessary because you can change. So do you want to change? Come and get coaching. I can help you change. Uh, he said, if I bought an outfit for him, he would return it because I was telling him what to do. My partner says appearances shouldn't matter, but I wish he would put more effort into styling. So it's, it's, here's the thing. He's, he's bullshitting for one thing. Appearances don't matter. Well, if they don't matter, what's wrong with wearing different clothes? So it's not that appearances don't matter. It's that he's a pouty little boy who says, don't tell me what to do. And he just, he just wants to push back against things. Don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me what to do. I'm like a pouty little boy. Um, so listen, my husband is with me today because I said, oh, you know what? You look 10 years younger if you shaved your goatee. He shaved his goatee and I went, oh, look at you. So here's what you're going to say to him. Baby, I'm not telling you what to do. You're free to do what you want. I just think you would be more attractive if you wore this style of clothes. But if you don't want to, that's fine. It is what it is. Be who you want to be. Um, but you saying that appearances don't matter and then pushing back at me saying, hey, I think you'd look nice in the shirt. I just got it for you. It does matter to you. You want to look like that and that's fine. That's your decision to look like that. But don't tell me appearances don't matter and then be unwilling to wear a shirt. No, you are choosing your style and that's what you should be saying. This is my style and I refuse to change my style. Be honest, but don't say appearances don't matter. When you are obviously choosing that and you you are going to resent me for just buying you a shirt that I think is going to look good on you. So choose to look how you look. That's totally fine. Um, but just know that you're choosing your appeal to me. Age gap in a relationship might be obstacle to build a strong relationship. If the youngest isn't uh, at least 24, 25, yeah. My boyfriend says I'm wanting too much and that he doesn't want more worth pursuing. I don't know what, what it is that you want. So if what you're talking about is fundamental values, like I want a committed relationship, I want to get married, I want to have kids, if that's what you want, and he said that's too much, it's not what I want, you have a difference of fundamental values and you need to not be together. How do you know when you have pit bull syndrome in a long-term relationship? Uh, good question. I would have to do an assessment um, because I would need to unpack the situation to find out if that is what you are practicing. Hey, Jason, how are you? My boyfriend says, yeah. My, my husband let me, listen, the clothes my husband has, I picked out. The cologne he wears, I picked out. And do you know why? Because it doesn't matter to him. That is what doesn't matter means. Like, oh, okay, sure. That's okay. Because his identity is not wrapped on his exterior. So it doesn't matter to him to wear a shirt or to wear pants that I got him, to wear a cologne that I like. It doesn't matter to him. So my husband is being honest when he says it doesn't matter. Your guy is not being honest when he says it doesn't matter. This it's, it's just, he just doesn't want to wear what's appealing to you. That's the honesty in that statement. My husband did want to be appealing to me. So he shaved the goatee, 
he wore the clothes because it didn't matter to him. And if it mattered to me, it was, it was no problem for him to do it. So your guy is not telling you the truth. He just doesn't want to be appealing to you. So just so you understand that. Right. He said, if I bought an outfit for him, he would return it because I was telling him what to do. Exactly. I'm just a little boy. I'm just a pouty little boy. Right. That, that's exactly what that is. Don't tell me what to do. Should I date the girl I think would be the best mother or the one I'm most attracted to? What are your long term goals? Like, what do you want for yourself? And by the way, it doesn't have to be one or the other, right? Like my husband is the whole package. He sees me as the whole package. So you don't have to settle between, you know, would be a good mom, but not attractive or um, attracted to, but not a good mom. It, it doesn't have to be either or. So the pit bull syndrome, Miss Honey, uh, pit bull syndrome is in no more assholes. This is when you hold on to something for too long. So pit bulls have really good jaw strength. So they will hold on to something and they don't let go. Uh, and so, you know, you might get in, like not use a no kissing for three months dating rule. You get into a relationship with somebody after the honeymoon period, the red flags pop up, but you're holding on. You're not letting this go because, oh, like it was so good this first three months. And if I just keep trying, if I just keep trying, maybe he'll change. Maybe things will get better. That's the pit bull syndrome. I'm well, great. Good to see you. Yes, you too. He's been keeping me on a leash. He says he just needs some time, but I don't have time. Exactly. Don't stay in limbo. Goodbye. Hello. Hello in Toronto. How do you know when you have pit bull syndrome? Yes. Guys, I have freebies in the link tree in my bio, by the way. Thank you. Um, if you go into the link tree in my bio, there's a free book and also a free long distance guide. I dated a guy for eight months. He wants to say friends opinion on that. Um, so I guess he didn't want a relationship. It's listen, don't stay friends. If it's going to hold you back, if you have feelings for him and it keeps you from moving forward into the relationship that you want, then don't stay friends. Uh, love loves. I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to head out. My outfits get better when I'm in a relationship. I'm open to trying new styles if she likes them. Exactly, Jason. Um, I'm going to head out, my loves, because uh, it's time for us to uh, start thinking about supper. Good advice. Thank you. You're so welcome. Uh, go follow me on Instagram, you guys, so that you can take part in that coaching giveaway. If you do want a coaching session to help with whatever it is that you're trying to work through, there is a coaching button in the link tree in my bio. Um, and you can get my books on Amazon or anywhere you buy books online. I have nine now, including one for men. So I have a dating book for men now called The Perfect Play. Um, if you want an audiobook, Fix That Shit is an audiobook now. You can only get it in the link tree in my bio. Mwah! I will see you soon. Goodbye, my loves.